Hello, welcome to another video. Do me a favor, please like this video as you watch it, if it is worth liking. Don't just walk away. I need you to like the video and leave a comment in the comment section. We want to talk about differential equations. Now, this is a non-homogeneous differential equation because there's something on the right-hand side. The previous videos I've done shows that there's nothing on this side except a zero, and that was easy for us to solve because we just had to solve um, the quadratic equation that we generated from the assumption, and then we found our general solution. But now our general solution is gonna look a bit different because it's gonna contain the solution from the homogeneous part, and then we're gonna go back and say, hey, what if what we got did not look like this? What are we supposed to do? What if it's like that? So there's more work to do in this video. Let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is get our homogeneous equation out of this first. So we're gonna, going to ignore this guy and say, let for y double prime plus y equals zero be the homogeneous, okay, a homo doesn't sound right. Let's put g there, okay? Let's just write it out. Okay, be the homogeneous um, equation, okay? So that's what we're gonna solve just like we do before. We also make this assumption that let y be equal to e to the rx. Now the reason why this gets more complicated when you have something on the right is, normally you would say, well, if you said let e y be equal to e to the rx, then this r must be three, but you're not sure. So let's investigate and see whether r is three or not. Okay, so we're gonna go back here and say, Okay, if this is the case, then I know that y prime is equal to, if I differentiate this, it's going to be re to the rx. And one more time, I know that y double prime will be equal to, if I differentiate this one more time, it's r squared e to the rx. So we can go back to this homogeneous equation and say, if I plug this in here and I say 4 times y double prime, it's gonna be 4r squared e to the rx um, plus, I like showing this all the time. Every time I solve it, because this might be the first time you solve, um, you watch my videos on solving differential equations, so I don't wanna jump into the auxiliary equation yet. Okay, so this is gonna be, um, this is y, what is y? Y is this, we assumed it's e to the rx and we said it's equal to zero. Now you notice that if I factor out e to the rx, what's gonna be left? I'm gonna have e to the rx, and what's left is gonna be 4r squared plus one equals zero. Now, when you have a product of two things equals zero, either of them has to be zero, or both of them will have to be zero. However, we know that this cannot be zero because it's an exponential function, it's never zero. So this is the only thing that can be zero and we can solve for r. So here we can say that 4r squared equals negative, okay? And that tells us that r squared equals negative one over four, which implies that r equals plus or minus. If you take the square root of negative one over four, definitely it's half imaginary number. Okay, so this is what you have. So we can go back here and put this number here. So we can say therefore y in this case will be equal to e to the, this is imaginary. And remember from Euler's, okay, it was the reason I did the Euler's um, equation. From Euler's equation, if the exponent here, negative, so let's just pick one of these. I don't, it's not really important whether it's plus or minus, it's just a constant, okay? So I'm just gonna say e to the plus or minus one over two i is the answer here multiplied by x. See, that's a lot, it's a mouthful, okay? Um, it's a lot to write up there, but whenever you write an exponential function like this, generally, this is what you should do. In another video, I'll explain how this eventually transforms into 
the cosine. So it's just the cosine. So let's say it's C1 times the cosine of half of x. That's let's write x over 2 plus C2 times the sine of x over 2. That's it. You have solved this part and that's the solution we're going to get. And this is what you call the complementary solution. Remember, it is just all from plus or minus half of i x. Don't worry about that. Just take the number, take the constant here and put the variable there. The i tells us that we have to use Euler's equation. Okay, that's that. Now, we have seen that the assumption we made originally does not match what we have here. So our answer was supposed to contain e to the 3x, but there's no e to the 3x in the answer we've got. This is a trig expression. Okay, so it means we have to find a way to include this in our answer. So we have to look for y. So let's call this yc, which is the complementary solution. And now we have the particular solution. So the particular solution must contain this, what is on the right. So what can we say about this? We don't know how many of this were there. We don't know what the constant was, okay? And because we don't know, we have to say, we have to assume it's, there are a number of them, okay? So we're gonna say, let the particular solution in terms of y be equal to a e to the three x. So what do we do? The same way you assumed that y was equal to e to the rx initially, and you were able to plug it into the original function you're doing, we're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna say, okay, y prime will be equal to, if we differentiate this, what do we get? We get 3a e to the 3x. And we know that if you differentiate a second time, what do you get? You're gonna get 9a e to the 3x. Nice. So that's it. So we need this because this is what goes into this equation. So let's go back to the original equation and say, therefore, 4 times y prime, y double prime plus um, y should be equal to e to the 3x. So, now let's solve it. Remember, we're trying to get what yp is going to be, because that's what we want. We got yc, let's call this yc. Uh, where is it? Okay, so we want to know what yc is going to be. So, um, yp is going to be, rather. So, how do we do this? Well, this implies, let's go here. Um, we said this is 9. So, if we plug this in here, it's going to be 4 times... 9a, which is going to be, what's that? 36a e to the 3x, and then plus, where is it? We go, what's my wipe here? We go here, it's going to be a e to the 3x, and all of this should be equal to e to the 3x. Nice. Let's go. Now, as you can see, Remember, it's impossible for e to the 3x to be equal to 0, so I can actually divide everything by e to the 3x, which I try not to do, but you can do it as long as you know the function can never be 0, which we already established. So if I get rid of all the e to the 3x, what do I have left? I have, well, let's add this to this. 36, this is going to be 37a e to the 3x. There's no point dividing, equals 1 times e to the 3x. Okay, I just want you to see that there's a 1. No, let's leave it. Let's say e to the 3x. So, this means if I want to isolate a, I divide both sides by 37 e to the 3x. So, it's going to be e to the 3x over 37 e to the 3x, which is equal to 1 over 37. So, I found my a, and it looks like I got my answer. Where is it? Right there. So, I can say, therefore, the particular solution, yp, is equal to 1 over 37e to the 3x. So, what's the answer? The answer is, 
add this guy to this guy. So the general solution, general solution is equal to, is such that, let's say the function we're looking for is, let's just call it y. So y equals yc plus yp, which is going to be this. It's going to be equal to c1 cosine x over 2 plus c2 sine x over 2 plus the particular solution 1 over 37 e to the 3x. Nice. This is the general solution to this differential equation. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.